you know what? I decided I will make a, a live watch concert with Dimash because I really do want to make a live watch concert and then we're just gonna go through this. I know he's 10 years younger than me, but I wouldn't say no to a d dinner with uh, Dimash, you know? Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode on my channel. Здравствуйте, мои дорогие друзья, я вас приветствую на моем канале. Меня зовут Таня, и я, как это сейчас по-русски, vocal coach. <laughs> I'm a vocal coach from Germany that lives now in Singapore. I'm also half Russian, um, and I do s uh, still speak Russian. Today is the date was so many times requested, and it's a very hard to uh, for the vocal coaches to approach it from a very analytic point of view. Um, I have absolutely respect for every vocal coach who goes through it because every vocal coach is going with his own methods that he knows that he works with, coming from pop and um, pop contempor contemporary. <laughs> um, so I think it's different points of views, but. Let's just give it a try, you know? Oh my god, Dimash, I am so sorry, guys, but I already knew Dimash before you requested it. And I absolutely vividly can remember it. So, story time, how I remembered Dimash. That was back in Germany. It was in a very cold, rainy day, like always in Hamburg. I was on my bed, YouTubing a little bit. I was not alone at this time, I had a friend. That's why I really, really good remember it. So I had a friend of mine, we were there together home after work, stuff like that. Um, and I saw a title on YouTube, someone saying the best voice in the universe. Something like that, I don't remember, it's still there. It's the best voice in the world. Dimash Kudenberg, Opera 2. And I was like, oh my god, that's a very hard title to say that, you know. I would not ever put a title like this on my YouTube channel and say, well, the best voice. Okay, so anyway, I saw Opera 2, and now comes the deal. If you are from Russia or China, I know that you love Vitas. So I knew that, uh, that the Russians like Vitas, and I know that there's a lot of memes going on with Vitas as well. But Vitas was very, very popular in Russia, in China. He retired, retired a little bit off stage. I think he, something was so mesmerizing about it that I just could, could not click away. And, I, and of course, I want to see how he is doing the chorus because I thought in my mind, oh my god, if he's going to make that chorus, he will be oh, having a real tough time. So when he was singing that chorus, I was like, oh my god, I want to watch this till the end. And that is where it really blew my mind it, when it came to the end, yeah? And I remember vividly that I told to my friend, I said, please, I beg you, please look at this. This is absolutely crazy. This guy um, is even expanding his range and singing to, to this. This is crazy. I never saw something like that. And um, yeah, I'd like to, to look at Dimash again, yeah. Um, and I would like to also uh, speak a little bit of the, the influences that those singers like Dimash or Marcelito Pamoy, um, Vitas, how they are now influencing our, our music that we listen to and how the approach for the younger generation to this music is. And I think that's a very, 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 very interesting. Other people that reacted to it and we just gotta admit some facts when you work in the television that a lot of things can be playback, can be audio tune, can go through pitch correction. That is not necessarily something what the what the artist decides. I think that the producers, the manager, uh, the people uh, that are owning those shows, they are deciding it because because they wanna offer 100% of good quality when it goes to TV. So you must understand that in those TV productions and competitions all over the world, there is a not always the possibility to make a live arrangement. Let's give an example. If you are on a, a contestant show, uh, it costs an absolutely crazy amount of time and money and a lot of people to change the stages. There are hours and hours there. There are different sets. They are changing the sets. They are all musicians that come with their own, um, with their own instruments on stage. They don't have a life check. They have only one life check before the show starts. They cannot go on stage and be like in a band and give it a small, quick sound check before they start the show. So it's very difficult, especially when you have millions of views. There are millions of people 
watching uh, this certain show and that is very 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 difficult then to um, for everyone to have a life to, to, for everyone to sing live. Shows just don't allow it at all. They only say, you know what, we do playback because we, we switch from a lot of uh, singers during the whole show. We just have a limited, limited amount of time so everyone has to go and sing playback. Some, uh, some shows uh, have a little bit more money, they spend a little bit more effort. There are some, like example in America, there are some shows like Conan or something uh, where their singers are, are with the band, they are live there. So there are also possibilities. But we need to consider nowadays in the music industry there is kind of a pitch uh, correction, yeah? So for everyone who don't know who Dimash is, we're gonna have to take a look at it now. So, Dimash is known for his wide vocal range, encompassing five octaves, I always say that in German, four tones and a half tone. His range reaches the bottom notes of the baritone register, all the way through to the high soprano notes. And on the whistle register, we know, for everyone who doesn't know the whistle register, I think for, when you are, you know, Mariah Carey is, you can always relate to Mariah Carey because not like I said in one video one time, not everyone can produce a whistle register um, and it's also that the back part of the vocal folds are not closed so some air is still going through and um, it's there is still no method how to learn it. So some people can do it, some people cannot do it. Some coaches say there is an anatomical limit to this. Some people say that they have it in their genes. So, there is no approach to this so far that I know, yeah? Мои друзья, вы, наверное, все уже знаете, Димаш. Okay. Which live performance should I choose for Dimash? I know he's 10 years younger than me, but I wouldn't say no to a dinner with uh, Dimash, you know? Always the old farts that put themselves first to the younger boys. Amazing, amazing. My mother said he looks gorgeous and she's older than me. They all mesmerize. I love how he builds the drama from of this song, you know, because everyone knows how it will be expanded the chorus. Absolutely angelic. It's absolutely crazy, amazing. Sounds effortless, but. I'm pretty sure that he sweats under his coat. I mean, really sweat because of the work of effort. But maybe there is not a big effort level before. Because if you put too much effort, you can get vocally vocally tired. If you just put too much vocal effort. He can handle the stage very well. That's very good. The song needs to be built, that's hard. I would go on the first row to see that. Try to sing the high notes home and then tell me how much effort it cost you to do that. And then we speak. <laughs> But for sopranos, it's, it's okay, they can do that. They can, I think for someone that is, I mean, not trained in the upper registers, you gotta see your voice as a house and you gotta look at it like all the upper registers are things that you need to train and uh, to have a fluid tr um, transition into the registers. For example, I never trained, trained the, the higher registers. So I end up have a, having a lot of cracks, cracks there.
We're still gonna assume that there is a pitch correction there. There are some other vocal coaches who uh, said similar things. Also, there was an e someone that worked in shows as well who said it worked like this, but it's absolutely stunning because you can do this live. It's crazy. The thing is to handle this instrument. The capacity of this instrument is crazy. Oh, look, that's my favorite part now. Then you might think it's over, huh? Crazy, 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 crazy. So I want, I want to go and check into a live performance of him because I know from the other videos that he's capable of doing it live. So just one big point is, one big point is that handling this instrument is something that not everyone can do. I think he's like 23 years old. So my father that has nothing to do with singing, he said not everyone has the talent to handle his talent. And I think that's very important. And having a voice like he has is something that he needs to take care of for the rest of your life, yeah? Because that is his powerful instrument that he has, yeah? Okay. Let's go in that one because that's from a live show. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's so you know it's life. <laughs> it's hard to say when people are trying to make you laugh. Amazing! Oh, I love it. It's even better than BTS. I am definitely, me and my mother, we are, we are definitely fans from Dimash. And I would love to see Dimash absolutely live in concert. We should definitely make a watch together Dimash live concert on this channel. Because I would love to, make, to see a live concert. Uh, he will grow into a very, very, very big, big performer. Big, I mean, he's very young now. Very good. It's not easy to sing in different languages. He sings in France as well, he sings in Russian. The vowels are different, the position of your tongue is different when you sing. Some sounds are very nasalized, like in France. Or in an Amer American language, the sound is more placed forward and it's more nasalized and the tongue is more in the back. Singing a little bit nasalized can help you achieve some certain notes, that is for sure. If I had a, a boyfriend like this or a husband like this, I would always make this person sing in, in my living all the time, all the time, but I would have make him sing. Very big, big mouth. Marcelito Pumoy uh, is a good example that you don't need to open up your mouth very well. Yeah, it's it's it can help you. Yes, to make the vocal sound sound uh, brighter and lighter. So in some very high registers, it's even sometimes not possible to to shape the note. Yeah, or to uh, put a vibrate vibrate. Vib vibrato, vibrato under it because the vibrato is something that comes very naturally it's a natural 
actually more than a natural thing. There are some teachers who say that they can teach that. There is an approach of teach it, but uh, also, yeah, it's uh, it comes with age as well. Dimash reminds me very much when I the first time heard him uh, to the singer Far Farinelli. And if you haven't saw the movie, please have a look at the movie. Uh, the soundtrack was uh, sung by Cecilia Bartoli. I saw Cecilia Bartoli live um, in Germany. I bought a very cheap ticket and I sneaked into the, the first, um, first seats. I was young and bold and broke, but I wanted really much to see her. Um, and it's absolutely amazing. The opera, the classical world for me is something that I really do admire. I think it's absolutely stunning. It causes a lot of effort. People are singing all their lives out, they work all their life. They start with a young age. They are very dedicated, very passionate uh, people. Um, they have good, very, very good breath support. They have a very good uh, muscle support. So a lot of things are balanced and they are singing in a very good and healthy, healthy way. So they can sustain to sing very long in their in their career, you know, and that is very important. And I, what I like uh, to Marcelli de Pamoy uh, and Dimash, and I, I think that those young, dynamic, uh, beautiful people are having a very big impact on the young generations, you know, because they are mixing, um, like you saw in that performance, he's mixing the classical parts with uh, the with mo modern with modern looks you know if you remember david garrett but david david garrett was playing on his violin um all of the songs like nothing else matters and he made rock songs play on the violin and he made it with an absolutely cool rock and edge style and the way that he was looking so handsome and modeling so a lot of teenage, teenagers were just falling for him. They went to his concert and suddenly uh, classical music had a very, very different different approach approach for these young people. And I think the same with Dimash is there, you know. A lot of young people are starting to look at, at opera and classical music in a different way. Yeah, I'm gonna speak a little bit for this. So, if you don't, um, if you like that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I would be very happy you you subscribe to my channel. <laughs>